So this video is going to be looking at Coulomb's law and the inverse square law. We we did a um, a mini pogo on Coulomb's law, and I realized throughout the day yesterday, um, looking at it, some questions that I I left quite a bit out of that pogo. I didn't mean to. Um, definitely not one of my best pogos. Um, I'm gonna fix it up and make it better for next year, but let's. Uh, take this opportunity to fix some of the mistakes I made. It's not that anything was wrong about yesterday's pogo. There's just a lot of important information I, I didn't really include in there, um, particularly about positive and negative charges. That's the big obvious thing I didn't really go into detail about. And that's a huge thing about electricity is the positive and the negative. Um, with gravity, there is no positive and negative. It just Attracts. Everything attracts. Everything in gravity, everything in space is attracted to everything else. It all just pulls. Um, electricity, that's not true. Electricity, there's positives and negatives. Sometimes things pull each other. Sometimes things push each other away. So let's take a look at that here with these notes. So I took a bit of a minimalist approach to these notes. You can see uh, not too fancy, um, just kind of straight to it. But that's because Coulomb's Law, It's there's not a ton different than gravity, to be perfectly honest. Uh, you can even see looking at the equation, it, all the same pieces are there. The letters are changed, but the same pieces are there. We've got some sort of constants multiplied by two objects, um, not mass this time, but something else. And it's divided by the distance squared. So looks kind of similar to gravity, it works kind of similar to gravity. So um, they use Q, the letter Q, to show electrical charge, and I, I don't know why. That one I can't even guess, um, but you know we've used a lot of letters here in physics, so it's very possible they had just run out of letters and they were like, well, Q, um, I really don't know. But Q is used to show electricity, electrical charge. So electrical force is often shown as force uh, sub Q, like it is right here. Um, so Q means electricity in physics. I don't know why, but that's what it is. So force Q, Coulomb's law force, Coulomb's law. Um, the Pogel did teach a little bit about the history. Um, I think he was a French scientist, experimented with electricity in the 1700s, um, Coulomb, so he used the first to kind of mathematically postulate this law and experiment and figure out what K is equal to. Um, so he gets the law named after him, Coulomb's Law. So it's a force. Coulomb's Law calculates a force, and like any force, it's measured in newtons. K is the Coulomb's law constant, just like the gravitational constant, but this is the Coulomb's law constant. It's just a number, 9 times 10 to the 9th, um, which is positive 9. So gravity was 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 10 to the positive 9. So that would be 9 billion. So, um, electrical force is, is typically quite a bit stronger than gravitational force for that reason. The constant is much bigger. Uh, and the units there, uh, it looks like I missed some quotation mark. Why don't we just draw that in? That's the great thing about this video. There we go. We can fix some of our bad grammar. So the units there are newtons times meter squared divided by coulomb squared. Um, that's because when you plug those units into K up here, uh, and then we multiply by two Qs, two electrical charges, that cancels out the Coulomb squared. And when we divide by the distance squared there, that cancels out these meters squared, and you're left with newtons, which is what force is. I'm going to erase all that because we don't need all that garbage written over our equation here, but I just wanted to show that those units, the reason those units are there is because they take charge and distance and they convert it into newtons into a fourth, which is 
really what we want. So that's what gets left over after everything. Force Newtons. What we want. The Qs are the strength of the electrical charge in coulombs. Coulombs are the unit for electrical charge. So the stronger a uh, particle's electricity, the more coulombs it has. If it's a negative particle, it'll have negative coulombs, meaning it has a lot more electrons. For those of you who took chemistry or physical science, you know electrons are the negative particles. So if, it, if, a part, if, um, if an object or something has extra electrons, it'll have a negative Q. Um, same thing if it has more protons, more positive charge, it'll have a positive Q. And so Q tells you the strength of, of the electrical charge on the two objects involved. So this force, just like gravity, it's between two objects. You need two objects for this force. One object can make a force field, kind of, you know, like Earth has a gravitational field around it due to its mass. But Earth's gravity doesn't make a force on anything unless there's something in in gravity to make a force, like you. You are pulling on the Earth, the Earth is pulling on you. But gravity doesn't make a force if there's not something to go along with it. Uh, so same thing with Coulomb's Law, right? If there's just one object out there with some electrical charge, uh, great. It's sending out its electrical charge signal, looking for something else with an electrical charge. Once once something else with an electrical charge starts interacting with it, that's when you get a force. So um, you can see that up here, object one and object two. There's two objects involved in this force, just like gravity. So here's really the key thing. I should have just had this one sentence in the Pogel. I'm kind of upset at myself that I didn't. So this right here, here's our key. Key sentence of these notes, um, opposites attract, likes repel when it comes to electricity. So if one charge is positive and the other is negative, they pull each other towards each other, into each other. They go towards each other. Um, opposites attract. So if both of them are positive, they'll push each other away. If both of them are negative, they'll push each other away. Um, however, if they are opposite, if one is positive and one is negative, they'll pull each other towards each other. Um, this is where it gets tricky, because in the math we do, in our physics equations, positive and negative means direction. It does not mean electrical charge. So, what you need to do is use the positive and negative charges to figure out what direction things are being pushed or pulled. Then you use, in math, you use negative to show negative directions. So it gets tricky. Um, that's that's the, the weird thing about it is, is in physics, negative means negative charge, electrons. You know, same thing it means in chemistry. In math, negative means vector, means direction. And so... Uh, Kind of hard to explain without a practice problem, and I don't even think we're getting that far until tomorrow, because this is a pretty complex topic, and the math starts getting tricky, and the vectors start getting tricky, and the triangles start getting a little more intense. So we're going to make this a two-day notes, just like sometimes our notes became two-day notes in school. We're going to spread this one out because it's a little harder. Um, but long story short, positive, negative. If, if one charge is positive, one is negative, they pull each other towards each other, they attract. If they are the same, then they repel. And there's that, that line there. If they are the same, if they're both positive, or if they're both negative, they push each other away. And R, just like with gravity, is the distance between the two charged objects. And you want that in meters to cancel out the meters in the in the constant on top. So meters is what we want. Um, and I explained in a previous notes in the in the gravity notes why they use R instead of D. Sometimes they use D. I've seen it as as D squared, but typically R. So we talked a little bit about vectors in the last slide. Let's take a look at them here. So 
the direction of the Coulomb's law force on an object is always either directly towards or away from the other object. So there's it in picture form. It's a lot easier to understand in picture form. You can see in the top, those two forces are pointing directly away from the other object. So it's not like going off in some angle or something like that. That, that Coulomb's law force, that was a horrible you get the point. Coulomb's law forces go directly away from each other, or if they're attracting, if they're opposites, they go directly, directly towards each other, like these ones. So that's the first point when it comes to the vector math of it: is how do you draw your arrows directly to or from the two objects? No crazy angles. So that's nice. Um, when we add a third charge to the mix, right? So there's more than just two things in the universe that have electrical charge. There's infinite things in the universe with electrical charge. So we can look at systems with triangles with three charges, which is what we will look at tomorrow. And um, and we have multiple forces, but still, when you look at two objects with electrical charge, the forces are always in a straight line, either two towards or away from in the picture. Um, another thing to point out, these are Newton's third law pairs, just like gravity makes third law pairs. Coulomb's law also makes Newton's third law pairs, so opposite and equal forces. So um, force right here, this force, will equal this force just in the exact opposite direction, and you can see that with the arrows. Um, and same thing down here. I'm going to use this force and that force exactly equal in exactly opposite direction. So equal strength. When I say equal, I mean strength. Equal strength, opposite direction. Um, a, a Coulomb. That's another thing I want to mention. So this is this is just kind of like a, a random things to mention slide apparently because I'm throwing out quite a bit of useful information here that may or may not have been included in the Pogel. Um, a Coulomb is a massive amount of charge. Uh, it's actually a derived unit. Believe it or not, a Coulomb is not a fundamental unit. It's derived from an amp, which, which is amount of electrical current, um, electricity running through a wire. Um, but anyway, a, a Coulomb is a huge amount of electricity, electrical charge. If, if you took two objects um, with one Coulomb of charge and you put them about one meter apart, uh, that would be enough to move Mount Everest. So a lot of charge in a Coulomb. Uh, that's why in the Pogo you notice we were working with micro Coulombs, that little if I can draw a micro symbol here, over here on the right. Um, that little funky mu, it's a mu actually, we know mu. Um, that's another thing I don't like about physics is they use mu for two things. So mu as a unit means micro, it means one million times smaller than is what micro means. So micrometer, or micro coulomb, excuse me, which um, I don't know why I'm trying to draw it, it's right here in this, PowerPoint, uh, microcoulomb. So mu, when it's like this, uh, here, when it's like this, when mu is, is used like that, it's a unit, meaning micro, meaning one million times smaller than. You can see that down here at the bottom, that one, there's one million microcoulombs in a coulomb. Um, mu also means coefficient of friction. You just have to live with it. Mu means two things in physics. You just have to try and, and use the problem to figure out, are we talking about a unit? Or are we talking about a coefficient? And, and the nice thing is if it's a unit, it will always be followed with something like coulombs or meters or seconds or whatever, right? You're not just going to have, oh yeah, that was three micros. That doesn't make any sense. It's going to be micro something. So uh, versus like, you know, if it's multiplied by a force normal, you know, okay, that's probably a, a coefficient of friction because that's what the equation is, is coefficient of force on itself. Usually it's not too hard to figure out. If you're doing friction, it probably means friction. If you're doing electricity, 
it's probably micro. Um, so anyway, long story short, um, coulombs are very, very large. Very rarely, very rarely will we be working with something that has a whole coulomb of charge. Um, that's why we've been working in micro coulombs, so small amounts of charge. All right, so we're talking about forces still. This whole unit's been about forces and different kinds of forces, friction, force normal, um, two-dimensional forces with a triangle, gravity, um, and now we're talking about electricity. So all of these are different kinds of forces. And so just like any force, when you're talking about electric electricity here, Coulomb's law, you're talking about free body diagrams. So you can see here, here's one of those triangles I was talking about. We've got three objects, all with some sort of positive charge. So they're all pushing each other away. And you can see that each object is feeling two forces, right? So this is the force from object three on object two. And this is the force from object one on object two. It's getting two forces. So its overall net force would be some sort of combination of those two forces added together. That would be the net force, right? And you'd have, in order to figure all that out, you'd have to split it up into its X and into its Y using sines and cosines. So we would need angles or something. We would need, we would need information. But we have the mathematical tools to do that. We can up into x and y same thing over here i'm going to stop drawing it's a little hard so just follow along with the highlighter um, this one that i just highlighted would be from object two this one highlighted in green do to do would be from object one um, and then going up to object one this one would be from object two this one would be from object three right there, the purple. So just like anything else, you look at all the forces involved on a free body diagram. And then you use your triangle skills, your trigonometry, sine and cosine, to split things up into X and Y. Um, it's a lot of math involved, but you can do it. And we'll have a few practice problems. So something to remember, right here in this in this picture everything's pushing we're saying like all of these are positive charges they're all pushing each other away but if one of those charges were negative then it would be pulling the other two charges towards it and so the, some of those arrows would be pointing towards each other so you got to look at each charge and, and each arrow and think okay is this arrow going towards or away from the object if, if it's a plus and a minus they're going towards each other if they're both the same, they're going away from each other. So tomorrow, let's save this video for tomorrow, unless you're really like, I'm liking these triangles, I really, I want to go for it, then you can go ahead and check out that video today. Um, I'll have a link to it posted somewhere. I, I haven't figured out exactly where I'm posting all these links and stuff with, with this remote learning yet, but... That link will be posted somewhere, or you can just write it down. Um, capitals do matter for YouTube videos. Uh, I think the I think that's the name of the video there, actually. So you can just Google search Coulomb's Law, Force of Three Charges Arranged in a Triangle. It's actually a Khan Academy video, I'm pretty sure, but, but on YouTube as well. So, And hopefully it doesn't have that restricted mode nonsense. I'm, I'm kind of annoyed by that, but I don't think it does. It does contact me. I know a few ways to work around it. They're annoying, um, but, but we can figure it out. So, yeah. Anyway, don't worry about watching that video today unless you want to, but tomorrow's lesson plan is is watch that video and, and discuss it together. So, um, I'm even thinking we can uh, do some attempts at live office hours again where you can ask me for technology help or physics help and watch that video together even and i can try to lecture you through it um, whatever you need we can, we can even do video chats um, so yeah that's tomorrow's plan is that video which tells us how to solve these three 
three-piece triangle problems with Coulomb's law. So I hope this video cleared up um, some of what I forgot to add in the Pogel, mostly that we have um, positive and negative charges, but that doesn't necessarily mean positive or negative direction. It just tells you, are we pushing things or are we pulling things? That's what positive and negative charges. So you thought we were done, but we're not quite done yet. Um, we've done two forces now that don't actually touch objects. They're, they're forces that act on objects from a distance. It's called field forces because they, they send out fields of force that interact with other objects in that field. So like Earth sends out a gravitational field and anything caught in its gravitational field will feel the force of Earth's gravity. Same thing with the sun. The sun sends out a gravitational field that holds the planets in orbit. Um, so electrical fields are also created by electricity, and, and that's how Coulomb's law works. Um, by creating an electrical field that pull, pushes and pulls other electrical charges. So both of those types of forces work through something called the inverse square law. Inverse square law is simply a mathematical law, and it's a it, it happens because we live in a three dimensional universe. You know, we've got the x dimension, we've got the y dimension, we've got the z dimension, and because of that, um, that leads to things spreading out due to the distance squared, which is why you see in both the gravity and the Coulomb's law equations, you see something divided by the distance squared and it's a radius actually and this will even show you more of why why we use r instead of d is because things spread out in a spherical way I, I showed you guys that in the gravity notes and this will show it again with an awesome picture right here i love this picture um so this is showing gravity but it works the exact same way for Coulomb's law and really a lot of things in the universe. So many things in the universe follow this inverse square law where there's an R squared in the denominator because as things spread out and make a, a sphere, it things spread out um, via the square of the distance. Um, so you can see here, let's, let's see what's going on. Um, So way, the way I like to think of it is think of it like butter on toast. So this is the sun here. Um, this is the sun. And it's sending out some, some butter signals. It's, it's sending out light, really. I'm just going to call it what it is. Enough of this butter metaphor for now. Um, the sun is sending out light. And it sent out nine light rays in this... In this um, arc here. So in that arc, the sun has sent out nine light rays. And you can see that there's nine red arrows here. So that represents the, the nine rays the sun has sent. Then it gets to one R, so just plain R, distance away. All nine of those light rays hit the same square. So there's one square there. All nine rays hit that square. When we get to two R, two, They've now spread out. There are now four squares because we've got two, two squares in the y direction and we've got two squares in the x direction. So there's four squares total and we still only have those same nine rays of light, right? nine arrows. So now instead of one square getting all nine of those arrows, like we had at R, we have four squares having to share those same nine arrows. So we've only doubled the distance, right? 2R, 2, 2R is all. We've doubled the distance, but we've but there's four times less light. The light is spread out four times as much. Same thing when we get to all the way to the end, when we get to 3R, there's now three, 
squares in the y direction times three squares in the x direction for a total of nine squares. So three are nine squares. Three squared is nine. Two squared is four. One squared is one. So you can see as things spread out in a three-dimensional universe, they make spheres, right? They go out in all three dimensions. They start to spread out with a squared pattern that any time you double the distance, it goes up, the, the, the stuff spreads out times four. If you triple the distance, the stuff spreads out times nine. So if we were to quadruple the distance, right? If we were to go all the way out to 4R, there would be 16 squares, still only with those nine arrows of light. So here at Earth, we get some X amount of light. If we went to a planet twice as far away from the sun as Earth, it would actually only get 25% as much light because, you know, divided by four. So we get 100% of light here on Earth. Go twice as far away, square that two, it's, it's four times less. So divide, divide by four, that's 25% less light. So light works this way, but gravity also works this way. And that's one of the reasons why some scientists think um, gravity works via some sort of like particle or wave. Um, they call it the graviton. I, I personally don't agree with that theory, but but according to the inverse square law, it makes sense that as these gravitons spread out in the universe, that's why gravity follows that R squared pattern, um, which which I guess is logical. Um, and same thing with electricity. We act electricity. Um, Electrical fields are actually created by the photon, the same particle as light. So we understand how that one works. And and so Coulomb's law, electrical forces um, also follow that R squared pattern. So basically the whole point of the slide is to explain why do these forces all have this R squared in the bottom of the equations. It's because our universe is 3D, and because of that, things spread out in this R squared pattern where where things spread out in the x dimension and the y dimension. So because you have that two-dimensional spreading, you'd have to square the distance. So yeah, there's, there's what we can find out. When the distance is three times, you now have those nine boxes. So it spreads out nine times as much. So in single R, single R, let's find Way back in single R, that those nine arrows were all in one box, so nine arrows per box. Over here at triple R, those nine arrows are in nine boxes, so only one arrow per box, so nine times less. 